Hi, welcome to this tutorial about Banktree Personal Finance, version 3. In this tutorial, I will talk to you about how to use the File Import Facility. Importing files is a very useful feature when you want to bring historical information either from other packages or from recent statements from your bank or other institutions. The most common file formats that are available are QIF, which stands for Quicken Interchange Format, OFX, which stands for Open Financial Exchange, and CSV, which stands for Comma Separated Value. Your data must be converted to these formats before you can use a file for importing. If you have been using Quicken, you can easily export a QIF file from your existing backup. All your accounts, both cash and investments, transactions, assigned categories, payees, etc. can be exported to a QIF file. Likewise, if you have been using Microsoft Money and only have an MNY file, known as a Money file, you will need to export this to a QIF file. In Microsoft Money, each account will have to be exported separately and the exported QIF file will contain all your account information. Certain information is not available in the exported file. For example, your direct debits and standing orders, commonly known as scheduled items, are not included. Also, some types of investment transactions, such as script dividends and more elaborate investment transactions, are not included. All the investment transactions will be imported. If the import does not find the correct investment transaction in the software, a credit or debit transaction is created in the cash account. Let's go see how the import feature works. Go to the File menu and select Import. The Select File Import dialog box will appear. Navigate to your imported file using the left pane of the screen for drives and folders and the right side of the screen to select the file. In this instance, I'm going to import a CSV file and select my statement.csv. I select my statement.csv and click on Open. The File Import dialog box will now appear. If you do not have an account, you will be prompted to add an account to continue. In this instance, we are going to use the already created account. I select that account, My Account, and click on the OK button. The next screen shows the details of the CSV file I've just selected. I have to select a few options before I can start the import. At the top of the screen it asks for the CSV separator. Banktree Personal Finance will pick this up from the default regional and language settings set on your computer. In the file, the separator is used to separate the columns. In this instance, we will use a comma. When your bank or financial institution generates a CSV file, they will choose what separator to use. For example, if a CSV file is produced in the UK or America, then the separator is normally a comma and the decimal separator a period. However, for other European countries, the CSV separator may not be a comma but a semicolon and the decimal separator may be in fact a comma, which is a bit confusing if you're living in the UK or America. In this situation, you would need to switch your regional settings to the European country before your import can begin. Sometimes your bank may put a summary of your account at the start of the file, or blank lines, or even header information. This is information that is not imported. You set the value of this field to the number of lines to skip. In this example, I have no lines to skip, so the left is zero. Due to different date settings in files, you can change the date format. 
you have day, month, year, or month, day, year, or year, month, day. You should identify the date column and use the same format. In our example, I have 29th of the 1st, 2007, so that would be day, month, year, which has been set at the top. The rest of the exercise is then to match the sample input file with the expected column names. For the date column, payee column and category column, pick the actual column number that contains the relevant data. Not all imports contain category information, so you can skip that if one is not provided. If you have two columns for income and expense, then in the import file you will need to assign two separate columns the paid in and the paid out columns. I have a single column which contains both the income and the expense. So I set paid out to column three and paid in to column three as well. If I were importing a credit card, all the debits would be imported as credits and credits as debits. Be aware of this when you import a credit card. If for whatever reason your import file is not in the correct format, then you will need to amend your file in a spreadsheet program, for example Excel, before you can import it. Once you have set all the columns and these match the sample, click on Import File and then click on the OK button. You will be asked if you want to use the Import Match facility. The Import Match facility will check if an existing transaction has been entered. It will check based on the criteria that any transaction is a match if the amount is the same and the transaction date is within one month of the imported records transaction date. Any records that cannot be matched will be flagged as unconfirmed and will show in the account register with an exclamation mark next to them. Do take care not to import the same batch as this will result in duplicate records. If you choose not to use the import match facility, then all the records will be imported as new records. This is quite useful if you are importing from Microsoft Money or Quicken and you don't want false negatives to show up as matches. I would choose yes to use the match facility so we can see what happens. I get a summary of the import process. It's pretty quick. 20 records have been imported and one record is regarded as a match. So I have a list of all my imported records. They are showing all the correct dates and payees etc. But they have been given some default values like the category is credit or debit. Payment type is set to import. The paid out and the paid in has been correctly imported. For the matching record, this one here, it is shown with a blue circle and an apostrophe, so it's a reminder for me to do something. If I click on the apostrophe, I get a pop-up menu with three options. Make new, accept match or go to match. Make new will make this a new record. Accept match will delete this record. And go to match will go to the record which is regarded as a match. So I will go to the matching record. I can see it's not really a match. The amount happens to be the same, £60, and the date is within the matching record range. So I'll go back to the record and select make new. The apostrophe then disappears and the transaction is entered as a new record. This facility is useful for scheduling transactions such as direct debits which are normally created automatically using the schedule feature and this can make you find the duplicate import records for imported schedule transactions. The next thing you'll want to do is categorise these imported records. As an example, I will set all the payees that have groceries or grocers next to them to have a category of shopping food. 
To do this, I'll select all the relevant entries by clicking in the selection box. The screen will also subtotal the selection, so it tells me there are six selected entries with a total of 188.96 in debit. Then go to the Edit Transaction button and select Assign Category. And select Category of Shopping and then the subcategory of Food. I can then see all the selected records that have the category assigned of Shopping Food. In one click, all those records were updated. I can then carry on categorising these entries this can also be done for payments and payees. This is not something you're going to have to do all the time. Once the relationship between the payee and the category has been created, it will be remembered. You can also amend the payment if this needs to be corrected. You can preset the import rule for a partial match on payees. Go to the Tools menu and then select Payees. If I select any payee, I can set the import text to use here. This is useful when the imported payee contains the payee you are using with some additional text. For example, let's take a shop that's in a different town. So let's imagine you have the Sainsbury's in London and a Sainsbury's in Basingstoke and you want to use the payee for Sainsbury's for both of the transactions you don't want to show them as separate payees. In the import text, you would enter Sainsbury's, so both the transactions use the Sainsbury's payee. Let's now look at importing QIF and OFX files. The process is exactly the same, but there is one area to highlight. As before, we go to the File menu and import to select the file and this time I select the QIF file. I select mystatement.qif, which is the QIF file. The file import dialog box appears, but it is slightly different. I get to the option of import all accounts automatically. So for the QIF and the OFX files, there is an option that will create the accounts provided they are contained in the file. In this instance, I know the QIF file I selected does have accounts in there, so I will select this option and click OK. On the next screen, I am then shown the sample file with one selectable option. The date import format and all the other options are done automatically. So I need to check the date format in the sample file matches this option. In this instance, I will pick day, month, year, as this matches my file. When done, I click OK. I am asked about the import match facility. I say no, as I know this is a legacy file and I don't want these false matches coming up. And the file is imported. It then imports four records. If you look at the Accounts bar, it has created these new accounts. Current Account 1, Current Account 2 and an Investment Account. It says four records have been imported. I have two records imported in this account, one record imported in this account and in here, which is the Brokerage account, the Investment, one record has been imported. You can see there was an investment transaction which went to the brokerage account and in this account there was an, an account transfer. This is shown by the blue transfer icon. A normal transaction has been imported as well. You will notice the payee and category has been set correctly and the payment has defaulted to import. I hope you have enjoyed the Banktree tutorial on file imports. This is the end of the tutorial. Bye for now.